This is Camp Meeting 2024. Culture, nurturing the God life and rebuking all disobedience. Standing, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Please take your seats in God's presence. Let's start from First John chapter five, verse thirteen. You will remember that the last time I attempted to teach, I showed you First John. I showed you out of First Peter chapter one the fact that the Bible says that God, by the crushing of our soul or by the practice of obedience purifies our soul unto unfeigned love of the brethren but first first john chapter 5 verse 13 said these things have i written unto you that believe on the name of the son of god that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the son of god now when he says these things have i written he seems to be speaking about the things that we just read so we might need to step back a little to see what manner of believing he's speaking about because if you remember i called your attention out of first john chapter 5 to see that there were two believings in that scripture is that correct okay six people said yes is that correct so if there were two manners of believing it means that we need to step back and see what the believing is but you see before he spoke about the believing he spoke about a record that god gave concerning his son and showed you that the operation of the spirit of the antichrist is that you make god a liar by not replicating the witness of the son not by not believing the report of what the son did so you make god a liar by not replicating the witness of the son all right so, when you go back in First John chapter 5, please go back with me. Whatsoever is born of God, of, of verse 4, verse 4 now. All right, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, what? Come on, come on, come on. Whatsoever is born of God, what? Let me refer to a statement very quickly. Um, I think it was Prophet Adam who was teaching here two days ago and told you that the bride of Christ is a city and then it is a people. Now, understand that that city is not everybody who believes that will live there it is preserved for those who overcame so the new jerusalem is the governing capital of god and only those who god considers to be governors at his return can live in the new jerusalem okay another day just hold that somewhere in your mind Now, so, if the Bible says, for whatsoever is born, born of God, overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? But he that, what? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that, what? Uh, okay. I was waiting for you. That believe it, that what? Now, you see, this is the first reference to believing. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that knowing that you have eternal life, you may arrive at believing on the name of the Son of God. Now, the Bible tells you that the man who overcomes the world is the man who believes. And I just reminded you of a statement. That overcoming the world is not surviving. By the way, Pastor Joel did an amazing... Can you help me celebrate Pastor Joel? Those of you who don't know that, the head, that's the head pastor of the church in Kano. But let's go. He told you that in God, there are categories of three. The impure, the pure, and the holy. And Peter was writing to the... Referred to Prophet Adam's history. The stranger scattered. It tells you that it was the entrance of the persecution of the church. And it was Peter's final acceptance of the Gentile church being adopted into the fullness of the inheritance of God. So the book of 1 Peter was written to show the picture of the inheritance that all of the earths had always been waiting for. 
Peter referred to it in simple words as a salvation of your soul. And he said it is a salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time. That means it is not a salvation that has been seen. That means it is not what Jesus did when he died on the cross. What he did when he died on the cross made for the purity of your life. But believing in his life makes you holy. Are you following me? So he told you there's the impure, there's the pure, and there's the holy. And the calling in First Peter is you shall be holy unto me for I. That means at that level you are living like I. That means holiness is an invitation to live in the class of God. Holiness is not living clean. That's purity. I told you that part of the ways Satan infiltrates the church is that he redefines words. Prepare them, also reiterated that. He redefines words. So that today when they say love, you already have an impression of what love is. So God has to raise teachers after his heart to sit down and do what we call in social sciences the clarification of concepts. Because two intelligent people can only interact intelligently when the concepts they are interacting on have been clearly defined. Please, I want to beg you. One thing the Lord said to me before camp meeting is that he said, this camp meeting will be full of sight. Then I realized that he wasn't saying it will be full of light. Because when it is full of light, it brings you understanding. But when it is full of sight, it opens your eyes to consistently see. So that when you engage these truths in any other thing, even if it is not the things we spoke about today, you will be able to decipher what that thing is saying. That's the difference between light and sight. So the light of the body is the eye. Are you following me? Uh -uh. It's, not the light of the, it's not the light of your life. It's not the light of your work. It's the light of the body. So when God wants to bless you, what he does is that he does not only shine light on your path, he gives you eyes that see. Because if you have eyes that see, no matter what situation you enter into, you will work. So look at this. So the invitation that Peter spoke about. Don't forget that I said Peter wrote when persecution had just hit. And when Peter had accepted that the Gentile church will enter into the fullness of what he has now referred to as the salvation of your souls. And he said, at least you were here when they were reading it. And I decided that I would do my best to trim all of my teachings to these three chapters and maybe add 1 Corinthians 13 somewhere on the way. So you, you hear the things that Peter was emphasizing and he was saying, this salvation is ready to be revealed at the last time. Moreover, he showed you that everything that lived in the Old Testament, reference again, Prophet Adam told you, just in case you didn't hear, he said to you, while you are saying to God, Lord, let the days of Elijah come back. Elijah is saying, I wish I was living your days. So when first Peter took the time to show you that the angels envy you, the saints envy you, then he told you that that working is ready to be revealed in the last time. And so if we stand in the last time, it means that it is a reason to rejoice because the hope of many generations is about to be revealed. So, the invitation, like I said, it's an invitation to overcome. Then immediately after in 1 John chapter 5, he said, who is he that overcomes the world? So whatever is born of God will overcome the world. But now we're talking of, of the person who bears the birth of God. Oh my God. You understand that Peter also said, being born again. Give me that verse of scripture. Being born again. Not of the corruptible, but of the incorruptible seed of the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Give me that verse in First chapter 1. Being born again. 
Ay, 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 ay. What verse is that? Is it there now? Uh -huh. 23. First time, 123. Okay. Let's go back to 22. We read it before. We're speaking about believing. Seeing you have purified your soul in what? Through unto Eh? Unto of the see that you love one another f with a pure love fervently or with a pure heart fervently being born again mm. because you are born again. Uh, yeah, I'm coming. Love one another because you are born again. Where, where are the people that know small English? Love one another because you are born again. No. Seeing you have purified your soul unto the obedience of the spirit, or unto the obedience of the truth, through the spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again. That means that this type of born again he's talking about is a continuous process. That this type of born again is a process of the continuous purification of your soul. Because you need to continue being purified until you arrive at what is called unfeigned love of the brethren. So he took the time later to show you that even the Lord Jesus subjected himself to that process. And it is his subjection to that process that made that he could finish the work of salvation. That means I was born again. I am being born again. And I shall be born again. That my first born again was the connection of my spirit to my soul. That process. But the second born again is the one I'm going through now. I am being born again. And this being born again is not of the corruptible. But of the incorruptible seed of the word of God which liveth and abideth how long? Forevermore. Next verse. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Four. All flesh is grass. Stop. Where did he pick this scripture from? Isaiah 40. Is that correct? Come on, come. Why does it feel like I'm only talking to pastors? Is that correct? So, for all flesh is grass. John chapter 6, the Lord Jesus said, It is a spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That means they are life giving spirits the words that i speak unto you being born again not of the corruptible seed but of the incorruptible seed of the word of god same equipment for all flesh is grass that means the marriage that had happened between you and flesh So that what you consider precious used to be. I say used to be because you have been on this mountain for three days. What you used to consider precious used to be the things that were fleshly. And so the process of the destruction of the flesh did not happen when you gave your life to Christ. It happens by the constructive understanding of the word of God that lives and abides forever so that as you kept understanding the word of God, parts of your life, oh, let's use James. 
James said, receive with meekness the engrafted. And an engraft is actually taking the part of another tree and putting on one tree. And the process of grafting requires the cutting off of a portion of the former tree. That means every time you receive a piece of scripture, there is something that presently exists in you that was cut off. So that the divine equivalence of that was used to replace what was fleshly. So that the day God deals with the loss of the flesh in your life, nothing fleshly now means anything to you. Are you following me? Now, I took the time to explain this so that you understand that it is a process of being born again. So, take me back to 1 John chapter 5. Let's do this constructively. Take back to 1 John chapter 5. Who is it that believes, that who is it that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God and that the ingredients that formed Jesus the Christ was the spirit, the water, and the blood. Okay. Or that the ingredients that formed Jesus the Son was the water and the blood. Listen to this. And that there's a third element in those two. The spirit, who is the soluble for the mixture? Who is he that overcomes the world? What we're looking for is the believer. What's the process of believing? What does he mean by believing? Because verse 6, he said, even Jesus, sorry, this is he that came. That's, who is he that overcome it? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. And Jesus is he that came by water and blood even jesus christ the bible says not by water only but by water and blood and it is a spirit that presents that witness it is the spirit that mixes up that witness to show what that witness looks like the, it, to the world because the spirit is truth. Now, listen to this. So the Bible tells you that there were two ingredients that made Jesus. The water and the blood. And while you are thinking biologically, let me suspend your biological thinking for a moment. What do I mean by your biological thinking? It means you are possibly thinking of the, the constituents of his external body. Of course, every student of scripture can easily insinuate that water is the word. Is that correct? It's easy to insinuate out of scripture so that we don't spend too much time. That water is the word. But the Bible says not by water only. And John considered it necessary. Follow me. You will see how Peter sat down. You see how John sat down in this scripture to make sure that the letter does not kill you. Not by water only, I say, but by water and by blood. Why blood? Of course, you know the substitutionary work of Christ, right? Okay. So, easy to say, we know the substitutionary work of Christ. That means that Jesus died so we could live. All right? Um, and we have established in this conference that the death of Jesus was to bring us in the present life of Jesus not the life he lived when he was walking the streets of the earth the present life of Jesus is actually what he wants to invite us into that means that for him to bring us into that life the process by which we come is the blood on the altar follow me so it was important that he that sanctifies, pours his blood on the altar so that anything that comes, conversation does not begin in heaven except the blood. 
Let me put it in simple terms so that we can avoid all the complex revelation. In simple terms, the first thing anybody who overcomes must must have in his record is that what Christ paid for, I can never pay for it. It's very simple. Listen, every attempt to add a work to what Christ did defiles the reading of the scripture. Simple. Let me even worsen it. Every feeling of insufficiency in the areas where Christ has justified you will damage your approach to the word of God. Simple. Every feeling of this, you I hope you know that works are bound to the flesh. Works are bound to the flesh. So, what happens? Oh my God! One of the things you will find out when you return to listen to all the messages in camp meeting is that God took the time to deal with every sin that can touch our quest. So look at this. It is the flesh, pasty. It is the flesh that cannot rest in what Christ has finished. It feels so undeserving that it feels like there must be something I must add to what Christ has finished. So let us keep it like this. What is finished is finished we rise upon the platform of what has been finished to enter into the reason for the finishing of that work. So the journey begins from the... Listen, every consecration becomes religion if it, is not, it does not take off from the platform of the blood. Because Christ has died for me. I live for him. It's very simple. Because Christ has died for me. He's deserving of everything and more. So anything that makes you feel, listen to this, it is not humility to feel like you are not worthy of being chosen. And I'll turn to the other side to say what. Uh -huh. Listen to this. Because prophet did an analogy when he was teaching the poets today. And he showed you that as Paul advanced in the revelation of the life of God, he advanced until he called himself the chief of sinners. Listen to this. And that must accompany you all your days. There must never be a time when you feel sufficient in yourself. Not a time. There must not be a time when especially with gifts and callings when you start to master the workings of gifts and callings what happens is that you tend to feel like you're a professional at this thing so what the blood did must accompany you through your entire journey so that when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ him at that point, there's nothing you become that is not on the protocol of the shed blood. And the Bible tells you that when you engage the protocol of the shed blood, I've done teaching on this so I won't last long there, you will find two things generally. Number one, you will find the purging of your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. In the blood of bulls and goats, and the sprinkling of the ash of a heifer was strong enough to cleanse the body. How much more? I.e., one of the things I want to throw at you, I started like three, four months ago. I started, Mamana, I started looking for all the much mores in the New Testament. Much more. Two words. If you find it, you will see the degree to which we have lived lower than redemption. You will realize that we are presently comfortable at the first level of purchase like purity 
the invitation to holiness is still strange. So you find out that the things that we have seemed to neglect consistently are the much more. That means if God only wanted to purge our bodies, the ashes of an heifer, the blood of bulls and goats would have been sufficient. Because every time Israel did it, at least God accepted the ritual. And if God accepted the ritual, of course we knew later that sacrifices and burnt offerings have I not desired. Why? Because all I wanted to do is not just clean your body. I wanted to purge your conscience from dead works. So that your service of the living God can come not from the confidence of what you have done, but for the confidence of the finished work. So listen to me. There is nothing you do at that point. Because you will find that if we had had the time, First Corinthians chapter 1 is one of the scriptures that will have added. But look at, look at this. You will find when you study that part of God's problem is that no flesh, he doesn't want flesh anywhere glorying in his presence. So that there's nothing I finish that I wake up confident that something inside of me achieved something. That when I'm done, I can look at God and say, I was only an unprofitable servant. I did not add to what was given to me. That means, I don't even feel like I was an advantage to you. It is what you gave me that I engaged. It's the working of the blood. Listen. So, people have heard us shout. I have shouted if I have been in more trouble in this station than many people. Because every time you shout, people think you have a grunt with prayer. People think you have a grunt. I thank God that's not only prayer I've spoken about. I've spoken about worship maybe more than I've spoken about prayer. And if there's any strength my ministry seems to have, it should be the worship ministry. But I've gotten up in several meetings to say the new religion is worship. I should at least glory in my knowledge of scripture and the entrance of revelation. But I've stood up to say that many of our interpretations of scripture are killing us more than they're giving us life. I mean, if you listen to the average meeting and you see the things that send people to pray, you will find out that those things had no divine consequence. We just pulled down the voluntary the things that sound hyper and we shake people externally with it so that hey, having a form of godliness or denying I have said it everywhere and I don't care if I'm quoted anywhere there is none of the elements of fellowship as we know. Prayer, Bible study, worship. There's none of the elements of fellowship as we know that the Nigerian church is not doing well in. But the Nigerian society is dying and I can put a bet on the table. If something does not happen to what we preach on the Nigerian scene, in 30 years, there will be no trace it will be us that's if we survive the onslaught. That will still be in church. 30 years after. Add 30 years to your present age. And you know what a disaster it is. At that point, your children will not follow you to church. So hear this. There is none of the elements of devotion that we seem to lack in. But there seems to be a hand that puts itself inside our devotion. And what it takes away every time is the blood. What it takes every time is the blood. Because flesh is normally satisfied in knowing it has a contribution. Kai. Kidabayana 
I, I sense by the spirit that I need to address something here now. Listen, you have heard in a million folds how important it is for you to give. But let me say to you that some days when God wants to kill your pride, he teaches you to receive. Not all refusals of receiving is a product of the restraint of the spirit. More often than not, it is the pride of the flesh. I still have a policy till today. Till today. And I told myself, when it overwhelms me, I'll stop. And the policy is that if anybody gives me a gift, I must wear it at least once. No matter what quality it is. Except if it's not my size. You understand those? Uh -huh. So if you give me a gift and it's not my size, there's because I realized that especially when you begin to arrive at some level of earthly sufficiency, the tendency, see, oh, listen, please don't get angry when I say this. I cherish more, sir, the gift of the poor than the gift of the rich. You know why? Because I'm looking at the press from which there are some people who give you 20,000 naira. And when you look at them and look at the present state of their lives, you are wondering, did this person kill his first son? No. When I take those kind of gifts, I take them with trepidation. It's easy at that level to say, no, 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 Jesus. Let's go with it. But many times, the God who teaches you to give must teach you to receive. You see, in this culture, it is not a come see, it's not a do, do this, don't do that. It is as many as are led by the Spirit. Please follow me. First John 5 5. We're looking for believing so that we can define the second level of belief. Who is he that overcometh? it? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by the water and the blood. By the water and the blood. And scripture said, not by water only. Then he said, and it is the Spirit. That bears witness because the spirit is truth. Listen, let me make one statement on that statement. I wish we had the whole time to explain it, but I have the whole year. I'll keep teaching. Listen to this. What it means is that how you know you have the right blend of water and blood is a witness of the spirit. Let me say something to you. There are two dimensions of that witness. I'll focus on one. Very briefly. Hear me. The witness of the spirit. Sir, I figured out that when a believer walks in the flesh, you know it. If you preach in the flesh, you know it. What will normally be lacking is the witness of the spirit. That, that mix. That knowing of the fact that I have done the will of God will be lost. The second dimension of that witness is the energizing power of the spirit. So that even when a day of manifestation is not come, you will know that there's an energizing power that stayed with you. And listen, if you get the blend right, whatever you attain, you will know how to sustain Because you cannot sustain outside the presence of God what you got in the presence of God.
Verse 7. 7 quickly. First John 5 7. We are looking for the witness. Or we are looking for believing, right? Because these things have I written unto you who believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And knowing that you have eternal life, you may arrive at believing on the name of the Son of God. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Stop. Please, let me take something I might not be able to explain today. But for those of you who are students of scripture. And I expect that that's all of you. Amen? Yo. I expect that that's all of you. Amen? <laughs> I expect that that's all of you. Amen? Look at this. The Lord Jesus prayed a prayer. Prepare them touched it very quickly. The other day. This is how Jesus said it. He said, Lord, as you and I are one, make them one in us. <laughs> Excuse me. By the like as principle of scripture, Jesus said, as you and I, Father, are one, make them one in us. Or let them partake in our oneness. That means as far as the Lord Jesus is concerned. Please hear this and hear this good. That means as far as the Lord Jesus is concerned. The witness is only complete. When what he has on earth. Has been engrafted into what he has in heaven. So the record in heaven. And the record of the earth. Are not supposed to be two different records. But you find out that the connecting factor of the record in heaven. And the record on the earth is the spirit. Look at this. That's why Jesus looked at them and he said, I have so much to say to you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit. Why? Because the working of the spirit is the perfecting of the witness. So if there is anything that is ever without form or, or void, God does not send the word. He sends the spirit. Listen to this. He has to send the spirit to hoover upon that darkness and determine the workings that will perfect that darkness so jesus when he looked at his bride she did not look like what he paid for because like i told you too many times god cannot sow jesus and reap chintok if god sowed jesus the only thing he can reap is jesus so god sowed jesus then chintok gave his life to christ then Jesus looked at Chintok and said, this is not, this is not the price I paid. Then he says, and if this is not the price I paid, sir, we cannot talk intelligently at the same level. Everything I say, you will pull down to your level and make a mess of. If I set you a modern kitchen, when I tell you to cook for me, you will go outside and put three stones on the ground. Oh, no, 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 no. Do you hear something in the natural? If, if I set you a modern kitchen, if I ask you to cook, you will go outside and put three stones and cook from there. So for two of us two, so I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. So who can make you bear them? I will send the Holy Spirit who will patiently graduate you so that you now can be like me then the next time me and you see we can talk intelligently Aye. so the work of the spirit every time is to upgrade the energy of God that upgrades anything is the Holy Ghost listen and all fellowship is with the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? I'm saying this so that the ingredients inside which you will culture yourself will be the right set of ingredients. Because for culturing, listen, you would have also heard in this conference that every man is cultured. It depends on what culture do. 
So if we don't show you the right mix, ah, good to see, sir. If we don't, if we don't show you the right mix, what will happen is that you will mix something and enter inside it. And you will not come out tasting like what God mixed. You will come out tasting like what you mixed. Listen, in this session, my target is one. is to give you the menu from the cookbook. You understand? You want to cook three measures of rice. Put two jugs of water on the fire. Size of pot. Three full tablespoons of salt. Because if the ingredients are not right, the outcome will never be right. And the trouble normally with a subject like culture is putting the line of divide between what is religious and what is spirit. Are you following? That's normally where the problem is. So when Satan knows he has lost a people, he moves to the next layer of darkness. Darkness is in layers. And the last layer of darkness is spiritual wickedness. If you give Satan the world today, the world will be in total chaos. The beauty Satan simulates is not according to what is within him. Oh, What the fall did to him was that he made his inner self dark. So every beauty that Satan seems to simulate is so that it can look like the glorious future, the eternity God planted in the hearts of men. So Babylon is built with bricks as against Zion built with stones, but they both look like buildings. Not because Satan wants a building. If Zion were ever to be destroyed, Babylon will enter into chaos because that's, is that chaos Satan wants to see. But the only way to invite men to chaos is by deception, create something that looks like what they are seeking. Oh, I wish you heard me. So Satan is working hard to build things that look right. Every time he saw he has secured darkness at a certain level, what you will see is chaos following. So if Satan sees that you have escaped spiritual wickedness, what, he follows you to the next strata to see what level of deception he can put there that will be acceptable. And for people who are spiritual, the last and thickest layer of deception is normally religion. Because in religion is Satan's mastercraft of satisfying conscience. Not fulfilling spirit. So many people stand in the place where they feel their conscience is satisfied. How do you explain, sir? That in Nigeria's present church, prostitutes pay tight. Please, and when we say present church, we're not talking about any denomination or any particular church. No. That is happening in a place called being a part of the body of Christ. It affects all of us. That Yahoo boys pay tight. No, no. It takes us back to the first message, Abby. Are you even first born again? Your conscience is not God. Though. No, no. So what religion does is by activity, it tells you you are close to God. But closeness to God is always measured by fruit. By fruit. By fruit. By fruit. By fruit. So what should concern me is, why is it that when Apostle Sam Saiba spoke to me like that, I could not control how angry I felt. Because I hope you know that I can feel angry and not act on that anger so that I can still look like a Christian. So if there's a place where it must concern you from, is what's, what's your problem? One day I said to my soul, what's your problem? What's your problem? Why are you feeling like that? 
I know the word of the Lord. I've declared it. Why are you here? Then I realized there is a veil. If it is not torn, the soul will not have an anchor. So I said to God, I commend myself to you. You are the one who promised to keep me. I commend myself to you. You know where the root of this bitterness is. Lord, I have confessed with my mouth that I don't want this bitterness in my life. And you know everything about my life means it. But I don't know where the root is. You, to whom light belongs. You, in whom dwelleth no trace of darkness. You, who enters the darkness and the darkness tries to hide. Find where this bitterness is and uproot it. The next time I saw the person, the excitement that gushed out of me, I couldn't believe it. So many times, when I shout Baba's song, my soul belongs, I'm not talking to you. What I'm saying to my soul is, you are not permitted to sustain an emotion that does not come from God. Pastor Joel explained to you something I tried to teach for a very long time. So one day I just opened my Bible and I saw be fruitful, multiply. And I said, wait, wait. That's when it dawned on me that multiplication is not fruitfulness. That in fact, if Satan wants to destroy you, he multiplies what is not fruitful. So in God's order, let us only begin to multiply that which is fruitful. If you heard me, you will see the reason for the barrenness in the entire patriarchal lineage. It was that God was waiting to multiply a particular type. I wish every woman who has been threatened with barrenness was listening to me right now. Listen, if you were listening to me, you will not be in any prayer point line. For those who don't have the fruit. Hey, My brother, the day God met Abraham and said, okay, it's time to burn Isaac. Abraham was not in faith. At least not faith as we were Pentecostally taught. Because when God said it, Abraham hid his face a little more in the ground and laughed. He lifted up his head and said, God, you see this Isaac Mataba? Lala, let Ishmael just live. Abraham had given up. But God had seen the type. So what is faith? Just in case you say it is Sarah who had faith. God visited them physically. And he said... <laughs> He was talking to him and I said, you know, so by this time next year, Sarah will have a child. <laughs> Sarah hid behind the country. <laughs> and she laughed. I will repeat a statement I've insisted on for at least the last 20 years of my ministry. No woman is barren in scripture no woman under me is barren. Not one. I have no respect for what biology told you. No woman under my watch is barren. Every woman, as is in scripture, is a womb in waiting. And what God is waiting for is a type. As far as I'm concerned, barrenness is, is a mark of a high choice. It is, again, humanity and flesh that puts us under pressure. Baby, you remember, I told you, 
that wasn't marrying you for children. I told my wife before I married her, I said, I'm not looking for children. If it's two of us alone, I like it. My children and children. If it's two of us alone, I like it. Sir, why? We can travel the world together. I can whisper to you everything God is saying to me. We can. And guess what? You are the only one who thinks that every time we see you, we remember you are buried. For lie, we don't even remember. I'm telling you, one day we'll forget and ask you, how are the children? Before we remember, oh, okay, sorry. Then say that get Yes, feel, make it. Ha. See, see. Please, let me beg you. Throw out Babylon. Make the most. Listen, I, uh, Fuzzy, this one will pain. To pain. There are people who came out of barrenness. Not because the type had been perfected. But because God knew that patience was not resident. Abraham was not expecting. Sarah was not expecting. So question, what is faith? That means faith in that context is yielding myself fully to the workings of God. Knowing that when those workings are complete, anything that is out of place in my life will fall into place. So let me say this. That means fruitful is not multiply. Ah. That means to be fruitful is to justify the type. That you justify the seed. If it is the seed of God that was taken out of you, the day you are called fruitful is the day you live like God. That's what God blesses to multiply. At that point, when you give birth to your children, you won't give birth to them in the state you were when the seed was planted. You'll be giving birth to them in the present footing that you have arrived at. First Corinthians 7 tells you clearly. That the same way it is with unrighteousness, so is the same way with righteousness. That if the seed is holy, then the lump is holy. And that if a believing joins himself with an unbelieving, that the seed of the believing cleanses the seed of the unbelieving. That's how powerful your seed is. There's no... Are you alive? What we want to do? Is let's, let's mix these ingredients well. So that when we fall into this pot, what will come out will not be less than God. Because that's what he's looking for. So hear these saints. I have begged God for one thing. I begged him for a glimpse of the promise every time as it is connected to my trial. Because the strength to endure contradiction is the joy set before you. So Lord, if you have suspended this part of my life, just show me a little of what you are working that makes that this part of my life cannot work now. Lord, my problem is that I have told my brain to never ever believe that you are unable. Mm -mm -hmm. This one, a This one is strong.
that I have trained my mind to never believe that God is unable. Listen to me. That's why you can't find me in prayer line anywhere. You can find me in covenant submitting to my brother. But you will never find me on a miracle seeking line till I die. Because God is not unable. Let me correct that statement. If I ever went to anybody to pray for me, it's not that the person is a mighty man of God. It is that the Holy Spirit sent me there. Listen. That means that part of the eunuchry that must escort you is the knowing that there's nothing that people have in this world that if I lack, I will die. Kai. Kai and Banzani. Kudunduni and Banzani. Arzikinduni and Banzani. Sabang Ursalima Muchenema Kayanduni and Banzani Kudunduni and Banzani Arzi Kinduni and Banzani Sabang Ursalima Muchenema Kayanduni and Banzani Kudunduni ana banzani, arsi kinduni ana banzani. Sabang Urshalima mucheni, Sabang Urshalima is the new Jerusalem. That's what we seek. So if there's anything I feel like I lack, and notice that all sense of lack is comparison. all all sense all feeling of deficiency is comparison I am not under pressure until the day I enter Ephesus in Ghana and when I enter Ephesus and I see their operation I may be prophet is sitting like 10,000 guys big auditorium lights dancing everywhere Baba, now so we go the day. I suddenly feel the need. Why did I even go? Why did I even go to Ghana? Oh, I arrived Gombe, and then I see. See, if you follow follow Pastor Michelle and his wife in the purchase of land, you will start stealing money. But I in Naganka. Michelle, I'll be looking very humble. You invite him, you come what Corolla 2012, 2007. You will come, like nothing, you, you see him coming straight like ruler. <laughs> then the next time you go to Gombe, he said, God has been good. He said, Allah, come, let me show you something. <laughs> he said, See from here to the back of that tank. Which tank? This one? I say no, that one. Say if you go from there down there. He say God just gave us. Me I don't see here. God just gave us. I ask how. <laughs> oh, I just sounded like my father. <laughs> when I said it, I realized I just spoke like Baba. <laughs> hey, I spoke with him this morning. He sends his love. He said to apologize to you that he couldn't make it. But they had been following the meetings. And that they've been tremendously blessed. So he sends you a blessing. Amen. Let me finish this thing. Kai. Sabon Ursali Mamuche Nema Stadia. Kai. Kai and Dunia and Banzan. Lance Nadunia Banzan. 
Why? Sabang Ursalima Mujene. Are you following me? Of course, you are New Testament believers. So when we say money is nothing, we are not saying that you should love lack and poverty. No, that's not it. When you look at us, you know we are not poor. At least if I look poor to you, look at Prophet Adam, you know we are right. He's our representation in those matters. Put him beside Mama Debs. My God. Hey! The model couple. I'm telling you, Jara will resign and go and be their peer. Let Elvis and his wife rest. They are tired. Look at them. They are tired. <laughs> Glory to God. When Pastor Michelle finishes showing you the lands that he has bought, you just go and sit down like rain beats you chicken. That's shaking. Father, when are we going to start ministry? Because what we are doing now is a joke. Listen, all level of worldly discontent is comparison. Stay for your lane. Stay there. Stay. Stay for your lane. Stay there. No try. Stay there. Be content there. Honor people in their places. <laughs> the most annoying part, sir. That one day, uh, Michelle have finished showing me the latest land that they bought. Are you wicked guy? I said to him, I bet coat me soap. <laughs> he said, Ah, guy, that you should stop this thing. That's from me. He picked this land grace. I said, Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Which land grace? Get out of here. He said, No, but it's true now. It's when you bought the land where Tabernacle of David is. Then I came. Wicked guy. Oh. He came to Joss. Met my builders. Ah, Alam Shelia is wicked. You know, it's like Elisa. They collect from you what you don't want to give them. And God is always on their side. It was Prophet Adam that described it now. That Elijah was still holding the mantle. So the mantle fell. That means if Elijah had this way, no this nonsense shepherd. Now you want to collect my mantle? Then God told him, Guy, drop it. Then he said, Sir, he said, if you don't drop it, I'll drop you. He said, Okay. <laughs> Michelle came. That's the reason why I can never ever trust John Red with my, in my life. Never. I can never trust John. Have you ever seen me pick John to do me protocol? Except when I was going to Kano. Then I saw him behind me. I said, what are you doing here? He says, sir, I'm the protocol attached to you. I said, it's a lie. You are attached to Habiba in Kano. John, that's the reason why he chose Habiba. He did not know. Because Pastor Michelle's wife is Habiba. So he went and looked for Habiba to marry. We get John. SP is almost out. Let me find somebody for target. Very wicked, John. Even you are suffering, Iba. Michelle came to town. Called John. Then they went to where they sell cement. We were digging foundation. He bought cement and gave John and called SP. This wicked black SP. God just decided to have mercy on his life. Can't you see his blackness is reducing? They are bleaching him. Then they... <laughs> Whatever they did. What did they do? He did like this on camera. During service. Lift up your left hand. I said left hand, he lifted too. You see, we said the purification of the soul is by obedience. Can you see? Can you see why people's soul are not purified? I was just preaching religion. That man must do extra. This is your right. 
Then they went and collected cement from Michelle. And Michelle gave them strict instructions that they should make sure that the blocks that they make with that cement enter the foundation of the building. I don't know that they were ritualists in this town. Listen, there are laws in the universe. And the wicked boys, they did it. They didn't tell me. They brought his bag of cement. They were, they were putting it. When he was leaving town, was when he called me. He said, yeah. And what? I said, yeah, I love you. I thought we were brothers. He said, no. I just dropped a little offering. So I said, God bless you. So I came and I said, where is this cement? I said, I said, they said, sight has finished. <laughs> it was in the ground. Listen, all pressure is comparison based. I will ret- reiterate an instruction Pastor Joel gave you today. Listen to this. Look for the you that was before you came. Last night I was sitting here and the Lord said to me clearly, you are where I want you to be. I broke out in tears. I realized that no season of my life is lost. So imagine if somebody starts a meeting this night for the spirit of delay. It's, I cannot be there. My life is not delayed. And my guarantee is it is the spirit that bears witness. Oh, there's so much to say today. But let's wrap this up. Because I honor the fact that many of you will have to travel out of town today. It's the spirit that bears witness. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And three bear witness on the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. I mean, verse 8, just in case you are looking for it. First John 5. First John 5. First John 5. First John 5. Glory to God forever. Glory to God forever. Verse 8. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit and the water and the blood and these agree in one these three are one these agree in one verse seven close with these are one seven close with these are one these three are one verse eight closes with these three agree in one that means that verse seven spoke about the unity of the godhead verse eight spoke to you about the things that must unite in you can i say it again Verse 7 spoke about the unity of the Godhead to fulfill the witness of heaven. Verse 8 speaks about the things that must unite in you so that you can be their witness on the earth. Now, I, I've taken the time and maybe we'll make references later to where those messages are. But I've taken the time to show you. The Bible says, he that loved me will obey my commandments. And the Father will love him. And I and the Father will come to him and make our abode in him. Look, look at this. Now, that love, the second love, is not the same with and God, for God so loved the world. He that loves me will obey my commandments. The Father will love him. This, the Father will love him. It's not the same with for God so loved the world. That means that there's a first love that the Father has, and that one is generic. But there's a response that love compels. And when God sees the perfecting of that response, his love towards that particular person grows. So that second dimension of love is what compels the Godhead to come to a man. Oh. I thought I was trying to be in a hurry. Are you following me? So there's the love of God for all men. But there are men that God loved more than other men. And what compels that love is their response to the initial love of God. So, in that regard, we can say there are no two of us that the Lord loves the same way. 
she loves me the Lord loves the world the moment we find out that love and we love him then the father will love us back and they'll come and make their abode in us verse 9 give verse 9 9 9 I have to arrive at the believing 9 9 9 9 9 if we receive the witness of men the witness of God is greater if we receive the witness of men the witness of God is greater let me, let me skip that for this is the witness of God that he testified concerning his son what is your testimony sir about your son listen to this let me shorten this by saying to you what God was saying was that when Jesus came to the earth these three agreed in him and it is these three agreeing in him that qualified him to be called the son of God the witness in heaven as written in first John 5 is the word so the distinction with the son was to say to you it is the agreement of this witness in any one man that makes him the son of God someone told us about the church of the firstborns prophet right for this is the witness of God which he testified concerning or testified of his son verse 10 quickly quickly now quickly now quickly I want to honor this time he that believeth on the son of God hath what witness the spirit the water and the blood that means simply put first statement this sonship witness is not an exclusive right of Jesus this sonship witness is the evidence that you believe in Jesus and we see again the word believe it he that believeth not had made him Jesus a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave concerning his son mm -mm, stop that means at this point believing is not hearing the story and knowing it is true Yo. so it is true everything that's written in the book it is true whatever he says he would do it is true that he's the son of God's right hand Oh Lord, Messiah is true. Oh Lord, Messiah is true. Ah, Carol, one night, this scripture stopped me from sleeping. That, listen to this. That if I don't bear the fruit of the Son of God, I make Jesus a liar. So to make Jesus a liar is not to disbelieve what he said. It is to not permit the same thing that worked inside him to work inside me. Simply put, as far as God is concerned, your witness is not what you say. Is what you became. And you shall be. My witnesses. That means. The burden of proof. Rests on my shoulder. The day I believe. What the spirit reveals to me. Concerning Jesus. And the burden of proof is my life witnessing to that same thing. Pastor Dan, that is what is called eternal life. And he that believeth not on the Son of God 
Sorry, and he that believed on the Son of God had this witness in himself. He that believed not God made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. What is the record, sir? Verse 11. And this is the record that God had given to us what? Eternal life. This life is in his son. He that had the son. Verse 12, 12, 12, 12. He that had the son had life. And he that had not the son. Please forgive me. Let me paraphrase that scripture. He that had the record of the son has life. And he that had not the record of the son had not life. Listen to this. I... That means having the son is not just Jesus living inside me. Having the son is believing that God who walked the, the sonship in Jesus is walking the fullness of sonship in me. Emphasis on the word fullness. So look at this. Verse 13. These things have I written unto you. Now, if you go back to First Peter chapter 1, verse 22, he told you that when that record or that working of the word and the blood is complete, you will arrive at obedience and unfeigned love of the brethren. Two scriptures very quickly. Psalm 103, verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what unity for it is like the oil precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bird even Aaron's or the bird of the priest that went down to the skirts of his garment verse 3 and the verse i want you to look at look at it carefully as the dew of Hammon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of the mountains of for there even what even eternal life you read on in first John, you find out that he says no man who has the light walks in darkness no man who lives in light hates his brother then look at this scripture said we are passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. You see that sanctification that happens to your soul by the patient enduring of the contradictions that come from your brethren. Listen to this. That means that your brethren were given to you as the yardstick for the measurement of how much life is at work in your spirit that means that if all of us arrive at life God has to recruit some new people who don't know life to join us because he's going to require certain people whose primary work for a particular season is to provoke the amount of life resident in us that means that I cannot be provoked with the brother and lose my opportunity to measure because two things are happening at the same time i'm measuring the amount of eternal life that is at work in me and i'm getting opportunities to step into greater dimensions of life and my problem must never be the brother my problem must always be my response are you following me Listen, so we can build, let's, let's build the spirit of hypocrisy. We're not saying try to act right so that it will look like you are mature. If it gets you bad day, I want to cry, cry. You want to shout, shout. You want to fight, fight. We will separate you. Let us see the measure. 
so that we can know how much work you require. Are you following me? It's not a call to try to be good. No, no, no. What will happen is that you become you become a tail bearer. Because the problem with the amount of hurt inside of you is that it must find expression. It is locked in. So if it's locked in and you think, now if I fight now, they'll say somebody's not spiritual. The problem is that you will still have to find a place to go and express it. And many times you express it in the ears of the wrong people. So hey, you want to fight? Fight. Who will separate you? At least we would have seen and I don't see, say this to make light of you. That's why you will hear one devil will come inside church and say things like, you see, that's why me, I prefer just being with unbelievers. I don't like church people. Not say with church people. Uh -huh. So that I will not even expect something. Listen, in our calling, there's no expectation. Oh, one scripture I love. It feels like I've shown it to you before. Galatians 5.2, Galatians 5.5. 5. Give me Galatians 5.2. Uh, uh, uh. unfeigned love of the bread see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently the descriptions were too many ah 6-2 sorry Galatians 6-2 6-2 read it 1-2-3 go two protocol come with a bag you can pick one eh there you what one another's body say, uh -huh. and so fulfill ye the love of Christ, right? Two per call, come. Uh -huh. Come, both of you are carrying bags, come. Give him both. Put it on your head like body. Look at this. Scripture expects that when he sees Peter carrying a body, he goes quickly. And collect it. See, he left nothing for him. And so he has fulfilled the law of Christ. Verse 5. Did you give him back? He collected it. Look at this. Go back, verse 3, 4. 3 and 4, put them together. For if a man think himself to be anything, something, when he's nothing, he deceived himself. But every man must prove his own work and then in himself hey, yeah, and not in another. Stop. That means immediately after he said, bear ye one another's burdens, he said, for you to bear another person's burden, first, wait, 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 wait. First, if you think yourself to be something when you are nothing, you are deceiving yourself. But, prove your own work. Build your own capacity. Then you will have rejoicing in yourself. In yourself alone. That means that in God's intent, we love and build capacity. That means the reason why he came to help you is that it was obvious you were carrying something. And it became obvious because you lacked the capacity to carry it. So you can't be rejoicing in sorrow and we feel the extra need to comfort you. That means If I build capacity, now nah, hold that bag like a bag. Where this, where this one like design? Go back down, walk up. Walk up like you are going to the office. The executiveness with which he carries the body. 
makes that you don't feel the need. That means that in a church system, there's a two-way security. The one-way security is capacity. The second-way security is brotherhood. So what my capacity cannot take, I, I should not pretend to take because there's a brother waiting somewhere who the moment he observes that I'm not able to carry what I'm carrying comes up. But when he comes to help me, I must receive it as a blessing and a provocation. So when, when Victor collects the bag, Peter should send him, I'm really sorry I had to bother you. I'm really sorry this thing is spilling on you. I'm really sorry you're having to spend this much. I'm really sorry. And what he's saying I'm sorry for is not, I'm not ashamed that you helped me. No, no. Please get that one right. Get it right. Get it right. Listen, the shame of receiving help is pride. No, I'm not ashamed. If there's anything that concerns me, is when will I grow the capacity that bears this thing without listen that's how my mother died nobody came to visit me in my house tomorrow they say love, 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 love that there's love in this church everything is love, 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 love when it's time to show the love let me tell you one other implication of this carry your body not expecting help Listen, when you carry your body not expecting help, every help you receive from the brethren you, helps you magnify thanksgiving. But if you carry your body with an expectation of help, any help you get becomes a right. So people think that the tithes and the offerings they pay in church is contribution. Adashe especially. So you can find a church member going, Pastor TV, uh, that time when you lost somebody, that time when you lost somebody in your family, I beg, how much did the pastor give you for, for the preparation? Say, ah, pastor gave me like 500,000. Yeah! 500! Jesus Christ. Me, they gave him 30,000 transport. Then the other person, if he's foolish, say, yeah. But that's how church is so you know we cannot all be equal the real problem here is that none of you is arriving at a car i need to do one more illustration you need to go and carry bag quick borrow anybody's bag pastor Abba's bag looks very fine look at this now this is the beauty hm. oh thank you lord See that you love one another fervently. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. This is where he commanded the blessing. Like dew resting upon Zion. This is where he commands the blessing. Even life forevermore. Look at this. Peter is carrying this much in his life. You put that bag now on your head. Head, 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 head. So that it looks like your body. Peter is carrying this much. Then he sees him carrying that bag. The proof of capacity. He's holding it like an executive bag now. I gave you a proper bag. Eh? The proof of capacity is that he walks up to him. We are dying, yet making many live. As poor, making many rich. Those are the capacities and the dimensions of eternal life. Listen. Let me say something to a few people. If you have labored in the fruit of representing Jesus and you don't seem to see the public recognition of gifts, Hold on there a little longer. God is passing the season of gifts. He's entering into the season of the release of life. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you out of 1 Corinthians 13. 
the season for the use of gifts in the body is finishing it is entering to a season of life so as it is with barrenness in the particular lineage sir there are certain people god cannot announce at a certain level because he has to permit them to be barren for a season until they can justify a type that understanding sent me to rest Listen, I did not say laborless. Actually, if you are seeking eternal life, you will labor more than they all. But here is if you are not yet seeing the public, as it were, imagine the shame Sarah had to bear watching Hagar parade the house. Imagine the shame Anna needed to bear. Watching Penina run around with her children. Imagine the pressure. Then realize that in any and every aspect of your life, where God has not permitted the public announcement of your gifts, what he wants to do is because his era of gifts is finishing and he's entering into an era of life let me say it the way you'll understand it jesus didn't have any gift of the spirit when i was growing up i used to say jesus operated all nine gifts still a statement of fact but not the truth of the basis for his operation jesus never operated from gifts First Corinthians 13, 1, 2, 3. Please return. Let's close there. Just 1, 2, 3. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or tinkling simba now please hear what he called sounding brass and tinkling simba the operation of tongues look go back now verse one the operation of tongues of men and of angels okay he calls it sounding brass and tinkling simba verse two look at this he said, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand what? All mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains. I have not love. I am nothing. Excuse me. Please, when you get home, for the sake of our time, look at this verse again. And imagine one man operating this thing what is he in your day let us ease in this the fruit of the spirit is love mm. let, let's make it easy the fruit of the spirit is love that means i can do all these things without the fruit of the spirit without justifying the type Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods, all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt and have not love, it profited me nothing. Then he speak the attributes of love. Love is patient, love is kind. Went on, on, on. Then in verse 8, he said, Love never fails. That means this is the operation that Satan cannot beat. Then he said, but whether there be prophecies, it shall fail. That means the operation of that gift is going to fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Why? For I know in part, next verse, 
For we know in part, and we prophesy, stop. That means that these operations of giftings are based on the part, not on the fullness. Ah! And that we may comprehend together with all the saints, what is the height, the depth, the width, the breast, and to know the love of God, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. He gave us the earnest of the spirit that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. That means what God wants for us, not part, is whole. That means barrenness has to happen to us for a season so that we can graduate from the desire for part and enter into the desire for the whole. Verse 10, look at verse 10. As I close. But when Oh, no, no. No, no. I was waiting for you to see it yourself. Eh? But when that which is part, perfect is come, then that which is part. Then he said, when I was a child. Part equal to gift equal to child. Fullness equal to fruit. Equal to love. Which is eternal life. Now let me throw this at you. Go and study all of John's, John's books. There are three subjects that marry in as one in everything John said. Oh, I love that revelation prophet them brought and I'm going to go and check it. And the book of John was actually his last book written. My God. Never seen it that way. I had always known that he spoke the book of John from an eternal place. Because he obviously was not talking about Jesus, his friend. If you see the way he divorced himself from the book, you will know he was not talking about Jesus, my friend. There was an exalted revelation of Jesus that obviously John didn't have as at the time Jesus was dying. Even though John was the only one who could break through all the persecution and be found at the foot of the cross. Keep me near the cross. Oh, near the cross. May I never stray so far that I cannot see what flowed down for me at the foot of the cross. Keep me near the cross. Oh, near the cross, may I never stray so far that I cannot see what flowed down for me at the foot of the cross. He said, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood limitedly like a child. I thought as a child, he said, but what? <laughs> when I was a child, I thought like a child, but now I'm a man, so I put away my childish ways, and I'm starting from Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, till I reach the end this song has escorted us from Gideon's 300. When I was a child, I thought like a child. But now I'm a man, so I put away my childish ways. And I'm starting from my home, among my people and in my country, till I reach the ends of how did I know it? How did I arrive it? Because sometimes the strong by their strength they can win. But only by wisdom can we build an abiding home. Though I'm starting from Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria. You see, referring to what Prophet Adam said, we are people who know our history. But now eyes are fixed 
on our destiny. So we are starting from our homes, among our people and in our country, until we reach the ends of the earth. No, don't go. Don't go. Wait. I need to bless you. Don't go. Listen to this. Understand that what we are looking for, sir, what he wants to multiply is fruit. And fruit is love. And love is perfection. And perfection is Christ. So, listen, just in case you feel like the full manifestation of your life has been slowed down, Pastor T. Like, why are we not blowing? I come to Pastor Samson. Wait, wait. Stay there a little longer. There's a type he's finishing. The blessing to multiply follows the blessing to be fruitful. Listen to me today as we pray. Because this is a prayer I want to accompany you home. And I bless you on the protocol of that prayer. Make a few announcements and we close. Listen to this as we pray. It's going to be a very difficult prayer when you pray it. There are two prayers you pray. Number one, Lord, don't multiply in me what you have not confirmed its fruit. Then the second prayer I want to pray is, Lord, help my patience by putting tokens of your presence and approval on my pathway while I wait. Because you see, the first prayer you pray will require a level of patience. It is not sweet for anybody to wake up not being able to measure results. Because the natural life cultures us to rest by measuring results. Pastor, do this. There's something inside of you that doesn't want me to come back to Zaria and meet what I left. If you had your way, every time I come, there should be something more. If I left you with 200 people, you were hoping that by the time I came back, 700 people should have come. And yet, the purity of the work should have been preserved. If I gave you the depth of the charge that I gave you and you were immensely blessed the way you were the last time I was leaving the city, you were hoping that by the time I returned the next time, you had something to prove. Because there's a human part of our culture that wants to see a result. We want to present a result. And a portion of it was also put there by God. It makes that we don't rest. And yet, God never puts us under pressure. Until he's done working for you. And I've done my best as your pastor. To never put you under pressure. It's not because I don't desire fruit. Me too. I've done my best to never put myself under pressure. So that there's no height we have attained. That we can turn around and say. It was the kind of pressure that brought us there. And yet. If we had our way. The next time anybody was coming. They should see. It makes us impatient. The only thing we ask for, Pastor, is that God, in the season of our patience, leaves on our pathway tokens of his presence and his approval. No, we don't want the approval of men. If it is not yet time to multiply, he should make us comfortable with what he has given us. But he should escort us daily with tokens of his presence tokens of his approval so that there's no day I will stand in any situation and not say God is with me. Then I read the story of Jesus and I discovered that until God announced him at 30, that's the order. All of the while, from 12 to 30, there was no doubt in Jesus. He's the son of God. The Bible recorded these be the beginnings of the miracles which Jesus did. That means from 12 to 30 he didn't possibly give, get one result. 
We don't know whether he even attempted to pray for a sick. But whether he did or not, he had to learn the patient enduring of the season of the announcement of the father. That means he proved maturity as a carpenter. No, no. So when God was announcing, this is now my beloved son. No, no. He had not done the mighty works you are reading. But God said, he's now my beloved son. That means if Jesus woke up every day from 12 to 30, all he was looking for is, Lord, are you with me? Are you still here? Listen, what he depended on was the vitality of his personal relationship with the Father and the understandings of the times and the seasons. Because I, the only people that beat the swift to a race, the only people that beat the strong to a battle are those who understand time. Work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So what you require in a season like this is to sit down and see, is God giving me the interpretation of my times? Am I seeing the burden of the Lord beyond me now? Am I seeing the burden of the Lord beyond Kano? Am I seeing it beyond Makodi? Is the Lord expanding my visions? Am I able to sit where I am and diagnose the problem that the world is going through. Because you see, God can never waste his investments. If he showed you a global problem, it means that there's a life that is going to rise from within you that will answer in a season, in a time. But what is required now is patience. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might obtain the promise. For when God made the promise to Abraham. Seeing where Abraham was, that he might prove the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed the promise by an oath, so that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled to him for refuge. And that refuge became a hope, an anchor for our soul. Both sure and steadfast. I charge you as my sons and my daughters. Let no devil put a pressure on you to perform in performance the things whose seasons have not come. I have served the Lord faithfully over you. And I have not once put pressure on you for any form of performance. I have rather encouraged and strengthened your hands every time I came. Sometimes there were things in my spirit I wanted to say. But I knew that you were going to perceive it from the place of pressure. So I left your city praying about it. Because one of the things that we must never add to this work is any pressure that makes us receive our satisfaction from performance. God is faithful to all of you. You have lacked nothing. I say it again. To your hearing and the hearing of hell, there's nothing you needed that you have lacked. The Lord Jesus has faithfully sustained you and I have prayed for you. I have asked the Lord to uphold you by his right and righteousness. And I have asked the Lord to keep you consistently convinced of the truth of his promise that he gave to you. Whether when we went there to plant the work or when we came there to encourage you or even the things that he has said to you in the silent recesses of the dark places where you stood. I have asked him to confirm everything he has said to you and give you signs. But now I ask him to grant patience in your spirit to wait. That none of you 
will know multiplication until you know fruiting. It is where I stand. I have not multiplied yet. I want you to hear it. I have not multiplied yet. There's a type I was born to breed on the earth. I have not reached there yet. There are many things God has shown me in the secret. I have not thought yet. If you listen to me in the last six months, I confirmed everything we've been speaking from the beginning. But I confirmed it in a dimension that we have not operated it before. And that's because I smell rain. The rain is close. The heavens are tearing open. The days he spoke to us before are nigh. But now I anoint you with patience to wait. And I say this to your encouragement. That patience is a fruit of the spirit. And I speak to every one of you. That every one of you and everyone connected to you. Will know the signs of the Lord. And they will rest in the tokens that the Lord himself has given. Lord, I stand today to declare that I and the children that you have given to me. We are for signs and for wonders in our generation. Lord, we have waited this long. And we don't mind waiting longer. Because we are of you, we are in you, and it is unto you that we build. Lord, I ask, anoint their heads, anoint their hands, anoint their ears and the tip of their toes. Lord, separate them unto yourself. Lace their parts with tokens of your presence and your approval. Amen. Oh, while we look not at the things which are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. So I bless you with the unseen. Amen. I bless you with the inaudible. I leaned over yesterday and I said to my wife, while someone was speaking up here, I said, the Lord told me that the tokens of the supernatural that we suspended, because it didn't stop. You remember, I stood publicly and I said to the Lord, Lord, let these tokens of the supernatural stop so that the people can be established in your word. And the Lord honored us. And you notice that from then henceforth, it seemed like the token ceased. And we have spent these 12 years teaching. It's been 12 years since I asked the Lord. I was in jail when? Yesterday I leaned over to my wife. And I said I know. That the days of those supernatural manifestations. Have returned. They have returned. We have seen tokens of it here and there. You remember the testimonies we were sharing in Zaria and the mighty things God did there. And the testimonies we also heard in Jaws and the mighty things God is doing here. And testimonies that I know that all of you bear supernatural things. Pastor David has spoken to me about many things that God, many doors he has opened. Now I declare plainly over all of our expressions. The supernatural becomes normal. Amen. Now the word of the Lord is established in your spirit. Amen. Go forth without fear. Expecting the intervention of angels. Amen. Expecting the release of the divine. Amen. Expecting monies where you did not keep it. Amen. Expecting openings from God. Amen. That confirm that his hand is with you.
and according as you have been taught, you will abound therein with thanksgiving. None of these tokens or manifestations will shift your heart from the solid foundation of the word of God that you now have received. You go forth from here manifesting the life of God. Soaked in that life. In quiet recesses. Soaked in that life. Because I see the angel of the Lord flying over us. And he is holding a book. In the book is written the time is nigh. It is a short season. Then the Lord will fill the streets with the manifestation of his glory. It's a short season. Father, we thank you. Lord, I bless the people. Those who come from everywhere. From Oshun, from Ekiti, from Lagos, from Port Harcourt, from Benin, from Wari, everywhere. From Kanoj, Gawa, Katsina, from Borno, everywhere. Those who came from Zari and Kaduna, the family that we have there. Those who came from Lagos, the family that we have there. Lord, I stand today to bless. And I bless your people for honoring your voice. Lord, I ask that even in the things that they did not understand, hasten their understanding. But Lord, bless them with the blessing of your presence. That they came, let them live evidently blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, you have brought everyone in safety and strength. We know that you will take everyone home in safety and strength. Lord, we bless you for every vessel you poured upon us by. Thank you for Apostle Samson Ayuba, his wife and his family. Lord, thank you for Prophet Adam and his wife and the family they sit over. Thank you for Elvis and his wife who have held their hand strongly every time they move. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Minister Moako and his wife. Thank you for Minister Abe Ujumu and those who hold her strength. Lord, may they be partakers of the blessing of heaven and partakers of the apostolic blessing of this house. Let the fruit of everything that you have committed to us not be granted unto them. Thank you for Reverend Helen D. Michelle and his wife. And the family over which they sit. Thank you for the new season. I see you opening up in Gombe. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the revivals that you have stirred up there by them. And thank you for the spirit that uses them to nest these eggs to fruition. We bless you for it. We thank you for our pastor, who you made our father. Reverend Chris Delvan, thank you for strength in his body. Thank you for vision in his eyes. Thank you for strength for his heart. Thank you, oh God, for filling the earth with the savour that you made inside him. We bless you. Thank you for all of our friends and our brethren, too numerous to mention, who have come here by reason of covenant. Lord, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus, Make them partakers of your blessing and your covenant in this house. Let shouts of joy and victory reside in their tents. Lord, thank you for every son, every daughter, everyone whose ministry is in covenant with us. Who's come here as they have come home. Lord, may they be the same partakers of the same blessing. That these expressions of faith will consistently abide with them. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Let's close singing that. 
We give you glory, Lord, as we are.